going out, not staying in, just hanging around with my head in a spin, but there is no need to scream and shout. We're not going out, we are not going out. Are you sure we're going the right way? How many times have you actually been to this house? Don't worry. Not like a home and pigeon me. I go somewhere once. Eat everything you can find, spread disease, and leave the place covered in crap. I believe you're still annoyed with me. Lee, I agreed to spend Christmas with you for one simple reason. So I could get away from my mum and dad. And what do you do? Invite them along too. They invited themselves. What could I say? Uh, you could have said no. You could have said, sorry, you aren't invited. I could have said, Jeffrey, can you get your hands off my throat and stop gripping my testicles? <laughs> He wants to make sure I keep my hands off his grubby daughter. <laughs> I might have said that wrong, but you know what I mean. No, he doesn't. He knows you're just the paying lodger. Auntie Maureen's been asking me to visit again for years, but I've never been that keen on her, so I keep putting her off. But now I felt the time was finally right. Why? Because she's dead. <laughs> the place has just been standing empty for years. My cousin said it was the last chance to use it before it gets sold off, so I thought, why not? Well, I noticed you didn't invite to your dad. I did, actually, but uh, I think the way I pronounce Yorkshire Dales put him off joining us. How do you pronounce it? Angola. <laughs> well, you know what he's like. If he knew we were coming, he'd turn up. The last thing we need is any more unwanted baggage. Ooh! <laughs> Are we close? We'll be there soon. Just have to stop for provisions first. You sure this shop will have everything we need? Dad's very particular about his Christmas dinner. Trust me, it's a proper old-fashioned country store. All traditional stuff that your dad is gonna love. Just watch, Lucy. Christmas starts here. <laughs> I think I've downsized since my last visit. Which was when? 1976. <laughs> Cashier number one, please. What can I get you? Don't worry, love. We'll use the self-scanning facilities. <laughs> Actually, I've bought a list. Bechamel sauce, pancetta, cinnamon, <laughs> grated nutmeg. Probably just skip to the bit where it says potatoes. Preferably very misshapen ones with all the green roots sticking out. <laughs> Sorry to be so specific. It's just that, oh, you have got some. Fantastic. We only stock the essentials. This is a traditional country shop. What country? North Korea? <laughs> well, there were a time I had a real shop. But you know how it goes. They built the bypass. Tesco Express opened 35 miles away. And I was buggered. Well, they do say these things come in threes. that potato van, ask her if she's got any rooms to let. Well, I think it's charming. Charming? What kind of idiot would think this was charming? Oh, wow, this is charming. <laughs> Look, that chair over there's rocking on its own. It's not doing it on its own, it's probably a gust of wind coming through the door. All right, through the window. I think it might be something a little more supernatural. Yeah, of course it is, Daisy. That's the thing about ghosts. They've got no earthly form apart from massive arse cheeks. <laughs> I've been told I have a sixth sense. Yeah, right. My grandma once appeared at the end of my bed. She told me I had a gift. Was your grandma alive at the time? Yes. Was it your birthday? <laughs> oh, this is freaky. <laughs> Stop rocking, Lee. I know. It's like the status quo of chairs. <laughs> Hello. 
There you go. Sorted. Right, I'm going upstairs. Good idea. I'll straighten this place up, ready for your mum and dad's arrival. You two go and freshen up. Yeah. All you'll need is a duster, some soapy water and a bulldozer, and this old wreck might start to look half decent. Oh, don't be hard on yourself. Just have a bath and put some makeup on. <laughs> this cottage needed was a bit of a clean and some George Michael. <laughs> Blimey, I must be feeling festive. I've just said the words cottage and George Michael and didn't do the obvious gag. <laughs> you mean the one about the dog with no nose? <laughs> well, see, someone's been busy with the old spit and polish. Well, that's another version of the George Michael gag, I suppose. <laughs> this is for you, from Lucy. I wonder what it is. Ooh, I hope it's what I think it is. I dropped enough hints. What? PlayStation Portable. Shouldn't you have outgrown that by now? Well, I would have done if she'd have bought it me last year, like I asked. <laughs> I got this for Lucy. Oh, what is it? Oh, just something small. Oh, you know what they say? It's not the size of your package that counts, it's how big your penis is. <laughs> so, uh, what is it? Well, isn't it obvious? Well, you must have heard her drop all those hints about how much she loves silk and how her neck gets cold in bad weather. Oh, great. We've got to do the same thing. What, you got her a Spider-Man balaclava as well? <laughs> me. am I in a different house? Yes, we're on holiday, remember? <laughs> wow, this looks great. Well done. That might not mind this place after all. Right, time to siphon the pythons. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, no, no, wrong phrase. That's not the cup of tea one, is it? <laughs> So, um, you've not been here since you were a little boy? No. Auntie Maureen was away for Christmas, so me and my dad came up here on our own, just the two of us. Although I didn't see much of him. He left me to entertain myself in front of the box. I wouldn't have minded if we'd have had a television, but there's only so much entertainment you can get from 26 shredded wheat. <laughs> I was glad when Ralph turned up. Ralph? Yeah, he was the son of some woman my dad was seeing. We used to play down in that cellar over there. We used to play a great game called Coalface. Basically, I used to throw loads of coal at his face. Happy days. <laughs> Is that why you got the kindling for the fire? No. I uh, can't open it. Door's locked, no key. So, what did you use? I chopped up that old rocking chair and used that instead. Me? What? It was freaking you out and I needed the wood. That chair looks really old. You shouldn't have burnt it. Lucy's right. <laughs> Guess what I've just discovered? How to count to 20 with your socks on? No. The fridge light only comes on when you open the door. Does it? So, what have you discovered? This. A photograph. A very old photograph. Oh, my God, Lee. What? If it's that one of me dressed as a Chinese boy, it's not racist. I was about to sneeze. <laughs> It's a picture of a boy in a rocking chair. It says on the back, Christmas Eve, 1893. I hate to tell you this, but I'm getting a strong feeling that the child in that photograph is dead. <laughs> Maybe it was the ghost of this boy that was making that chair rock earlier. Until you burnt it. Look, there's nothing spooky about this house. I've been here before, remember? So, can you stop acting like terrified little children? Don't hurt me! <laughs> it's just Dad. I know, I think I said don't hurt me. <laughs> so, you got here all right then, Geoffrey? No, we died halfway here in a car accident. <laughs> ah, the plot thickens. So, uh, what's in the box? A turkey. There's also several bags of food and drink in the back of the car. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Dad. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very generous of you, Geoffrey, but I did sort of make it clear that I was arranging all the supplies this week. Yes, you did. That's why we brought a turkey and several bags of food and drink. <laughs> and I can leave it all in the car if you don't need it. Do you need it? Yes. Good. <laughs> it's all in the boot, Lee. Car keys in the bowl. Maybe we should unpack the car before we get onto the wife swapping. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry about Geoffrey. He does like things done in a certain way. All right, we'll do the wire swapping first. <laughs> <laughs> this all looks very cosy. Not really what I was expecting. No, I must admit. I arrived here expecting a dump. No need to ask Geoffrey, just go and have one. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go and get the rest of the food. <laughs> By the way, who was that child we passed on the way in? <laughs> what child? It was a young boy standing at the gatepost as we drove in. <laughs> Did he look like this? <laughs> Couldn't really see. His face was shrouded with a hood. <laughs> Did he look like this? <laughs> I told you, Wendy, there was no boy. It must have been a sheep. <laughs> there you go. A sheep. That explains everything. <laughs> was it a sheep? Quite possible to mistake a sheep for a young man on a dark night, especially when you're going at speed. Your Honour. <laughs> so now we have a rocking chair, a photograph, and a boy with the power to turn into a sheep. <laughs> Daisy thinks the house is haunted. How exciting. Who by? Hard to say, but I think probably a ghost. <laughs> a ghost that Lee has awoken from its slumber. It's been here for 120 years and it's very unhappy with him. I've only been here five minutes and I know how it feels. <laughs> There's no such thing as ghosts, Daisy. There you go. A sensible voice at last. So. Are you going to bring the rest of that food in, then, Lee? Actually, I'll do it in the morning. <laughs> right. Who fancies a small glass of brandy to start the Christmas week? Or a large glass? I think I'll have a bath. Oh, thirsty. <laughs> I know you're going to say I'm paranoid, but I don't think your dad likes me. Oh, well, you don't be silly. Of course you're not paranoid. <laughs> Trust me, I can tell he's happy by looking at his hands. What about his hands? They're not around your neck. <laughs> Thanks again, Lee, for inviting us here. It's very kind of you, isn't it, Geoffrey? Yes, yes, very good of you. Mm. <laughs> I hope we're not spoiling any plans you might have had by joining you for Christmas, Lee. No. Oh. No plans, just a good old traditional Christmas, staring at stockings and wondering what's inside them, <laughs> wanting to rip them open. Your chestnuts. <laughs> Roasting on an open fire. Hey, look what else I found. Some old sheet music for the penny whistle, just like the boys playing in the photograph. Silent night. Where'd you keep finding this stuff? Just lying around in the kitchen, almost as if someone wanted us to find it. Maybe we're being sent a message. Yeah, of course we are, Daisy. You burnt my rocking chair, and despite the fact that I'm dead, I'm going to seek revenge by turning into a sheep and leaving music of Christmas songs lying around. <laughs> yeah, it makes complete sense to me. Did this ghost used to write the clues on 321? <laughs> what was that? It's coming from the cellar. But it's locked. Who could have got down there? Who do you think? Who knows this old house better than anyone? <laughs> Shaken Stevens. <laughs> I should have known. It's coming from behind a green door. Oh, God. It's OK. There's nothing to be scared of. He's right, Lucy. It's probably just rats. Yeah, of course it is. There's nothing to fear down there. But just to put her mind at rest, Lee, Wrench that cellar door open and go down there and check. What? <laughs> Stop Lucy's mind racing. And Daisy's. Although I suspect that's more of a three-legged race. <laughs> Hang on. Listen. What? I think it stopped. Are you sure? I can't hear anything. <laughs> Jeffrey's right. 
Must be rats, but they've obviously gone away. I think we're all letting our imaginations run a little wild, don't you? Maybe we should all just go to bed. Good idea. Geoffrey, Wendy, you're in the room just next to Daisy and Lucy, and I'm right on the other side of the house, all on my little ownsome. <laughs> don't worry, Lee. The rats can't get you up there. It's just the ghost of the disgruntled dead child that you want to watch out for. <laughs> Apologising for that, I was terrified. <laughs> it sounded like a musical instrument being played. Like the one that boy was holding in that picture. Oh, not this again. Ghosts don't exist, Lucy. There are no ghosts. I do not want to hear the word ghosts mentioned again. <laughs> oh, Christ, it's a ghost! <laughs> Lucy, what are you doing? If your dad comes in here, he'll have my bollocks as baubles. <laughs> I mean it, Lucy, get out. No chance. There's a dead thing down there blowing a penny whistle. If your dad walks in here, I think you're blowing my penny whistle. <laughs> what do you think it wants? I don't know. I ain't know about ghosts from that Patrick Swayze film. I don't know if he wants to kill me or sit me at a potter's wheel and do me from behind. <laughs> happened in that film? <laughs> you didn't see the version I saw. <laughs> Stopped. Maybe he's gone away. <laughs> <laughs> She's scared of ghosts. Look at him. What the hell's going on? Nothing. Nothing? You're in bed with my daughter. How could you lure yourself like this? Oh, don't be like that. She's not a bad-looking girl. <laughs> Honestly, Dad, there's nothing going on, I promise. I heard creepy noises and I was scared. Mm. Well, any strange noise in this house is probably caused by Lee pretending to be a ghost. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Of course you are. You're playing tricks on Lucy because you want to put the willies up her. <laughs> Can someone say something before my gum starts bleeding? <laughs> Be careful too, Lucy. <laughs> What's going on? We are running away to join the circus, but we are short of a clown. Do you fancy making up the numbers? <laughs> we heard someone playing the penny whistle. I can't hear anything. Me neither. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's in the toilet. Sounds like you're telling me off at home. <laughs> Daisy? Daisy, is that you? Yes, hello. Oh! <laughs> so, the undead has finally awoken. <laughs> what are you doing? In films, it's always the one at the back that gets it first. <laughs> well, the ghost won't get you. He'll probably just ask you out. What is it? Well, there's only one way to find out.
I'd give it five minutes if I were you. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? I've got a lizard that lives up my bum and it's dead thirsty. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> so you're Frank. I'm Wendy. It's very nice to meet you. Um, I would offer to shake. Oh, that's generous, love, but I'll do that myself when I've finished. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing here, but at least that explains everything. Let's just brick up the doorway and forget this ever happened. I can hear you through this door, you know. So can we. Can you run a tap or something? <laughs> that was quick. Well, when Geoffrey came up with that poker, it sort of speeded things up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, we don't, Dad. Could you be a bit more graphic, please? <laughs> I don't understand. I thought Lee invited you for Christmas, but you couldn't make it. He invited me? Did he balls invite me? I'd no idea anyone else was here till 30 seconds ago. So what are you doing here, Frank? Well, this place has got some very happy memories for me. Remember 76, Lee? Decorating the tree? Going to Carol's at midnight? I didn't know you were religious. Well, not. And neither was Carol. <laughs> That's the woman I was telling you about that Dad was seeing. I got here this afternoon. I've been out all day looking for provisions. All I could find in that drawer was a, a little music book and a penny whistle. That explains why everything was lying around. Well, it doesn't explain everything, though, does it? What about that noise in the cellar? I told you. Rats. All right. What about the boy at the gate? Uh, well, Dad's quite small. Yeah, but you wouldn't mistake him for a little boy, though. No, but you might mistake him for a sheep. <laughs> Especially that particular breed that's always drunk and after money. <laughs> I'm not after anything. I just had nowhere to go this Christmas. I'm sorry if I scared you, and I certainly don't want to intrude on your festivities. So, I'll be on my way first thing in the morning. Don't be silly, Dad. It'll take you ages to get back home in this weather. Best you set off now and make an head start. <laughs> Lee's joking, of course. We wouldn't hear of you leaving. You must spend Christmas with us. Well, um, let's not be too hasty. Where would he sleep? I could share a bed with our Lee. Actually, that's an excellent idea. <laughs> After all, Lee, it is Christmas. <laughs> Don't worry, Lee. You can still sneak Lucy into the bed. We can go top to tail and I'll keep my eyes closed. Please stop talking. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but I feel a bit stupid this morning. Don't worry, son. Things look very different in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, I think I prefer you were a ghost. They might carry their heads under their arms, but at least they managed to tuck their balls in. <laughs> Remind me again why I didn't invite him? <laughs> To be honest with you, Lucy Love, I'm quite surprised a sensible girl like you ever believed in the legend of the ghost in the first place. Well, except it's not a legend, is it? It's just a silly theory Daisy came up with. Yes, well, they laughed at Isaac Newton's theories, but if he hadn't have invented gravity, we'd all still be floating around looking for heavy shoes. <laughs> you mean you've not heard the legend of the ghost of the little boy? I think we've all heard enough talk about ghosts. Thank you very much. Of course. And you're absolutely right, Geoffrey. My lips are sealed. No, come on, Frank. What legend? It was Christmas Eve, 1894. <laughs> the little boy in the picture lived here then, just him and his dad. And every day, the dad would go off to work while the little lad played. And every night, he'd wait for his father to come home, just sitting, waiting, in his rocking chair. Every night, just rocking, back and forth, back and forth, all alone in this big house. The lucky bastard. <laughs> One Christmas Eve, after they built a snowman together, the dad went off promising to return with a special Christmas present. The little boy waited, excited, rocking back and forth, back and forth. But the snow came down, thick and cold, like today. And, well, the dad never came home. What happened to him? No one really knows. Some say he might have killed himself. How could someone in such a beautiful place like this ever want to kill themselves? I buy it. 
All Christmas, the boy waited for his father, until eventually, he died too. From a broken heart, they say. The legend is, he still waits for his father to return with the presents, rocking back and forth, back and forth in his rocket chair. Until Lee chucked it on the fire. <laughs> well, like I say, it's probably a load of bollocks. <laughs> Talking of which, the Mitchell brothers have popped out again. <laughs> right. I'm off to that caravan shop. I've got a sudden urge for a couple of King Edwards. <laughs> yes, well, we must make a move, too, before this snow gets any worse. Where are you going? Well, our traditional Christmas Eve family walk. Good idea. I like a nice long stroll. Uh, how does 300 miles one way grab you? <laughs> Give us a minute, Geoffrey. We'll just get dressed. Well, I don't wish to be rude, but these walks are a family tradition. Wendy and I use them to catch up with Lucy. Oh, fast walker, is she? <laughs> you know, this reminds me of 1976. You, as a little boy, eh, hanging your stocking up, waiting for your presents. Yeah. You telling me to leave a glass of whiskey out for Santa? Not forgetting Rudolph. Yeah. One for him, too. <laughs> and for Donna. And Dancer. And Blitzen. And the others. I never even knew there was a reindeer called Steve. <laughs> Talking of presents, what have you done with them? How do you mean? The presents. From under the tree. I haven't touched them. Well, they were there when everyone left for that walk, and there's been no one here except me and you. How come haunted houses never have any WD 40? <laughs> when did you unlock that cellar door? I didn't. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for all this. Yes. Of course there is. Although, it would fit the legend, wouldn't it? How do you mean? That Christmas when the dad didn't come home, the little boy didn't get his presents. Maybe he's making up for it now. Well, he's going to be disappointed when he opens a fondue set and a biography of Tom Hanks. <laughs> we better check down there. So off you go. <laughs> Bulb's gone. Don't worry. Your Auntie Maureen always kept a box of spares. Good. Where are they? Right down there at the back of the cellar. <laughs> Hello? Is anyone in here? Hello? By the way, can I just say... I felt the film The Exorcist painted you like in a very bad light. <laughs> well, it's either a lion or a witch, but either way, it's not looking good. <laughs> Down here, mangy little git. Ah! <laughs> what are you doing down here, you mangy little git? <laughs> Why did you scream? It's just the cat from the caravan. There must be an open window and he's got trapped down here or something. Well, at least that explains the noises from down here. But it doesn't explain the cellar door being open, does it? Or the missing presents. No, but maybe that does. Maybe it doesn't mean us. <laughs> well, that's all right, cos we are leaving, aren't we? In a day or two. <laughs> oh, yeah? Or else what?
None of this makes sense. If there is a ghost in this house, which there isn't, how come I didn't see it when I was down here with Ralph? Who? Ralph, that kid I used to play with. What kid? The son of Carol, the woman you were knocking off. Ralph, sort of miserable, pale looking. What? At least you didn't have a son. You used to play down here on your own. Well, who was that boy? Oh, the little bastard. He could have told me he was a ghost. No wonder he never agreed to an arm wrestle. <laughs> You're telling me you've seen this ghost before? Seen it? I used to throw coal at his face. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't like you. And now you've burnt his rocking chair. Ralph! Ralph! Whatever Lee did to you, it was nothing to do with me. <laughs> so if you're looking for revenge, please remember that. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Oh, God, he's locked us in! He's gonna throw a call at me face and kill me! Help! Try pushing. <laughs> he shouldn't have burned his chair, son. It's not my fault the kid's got an unhealthy interest in antique pine. When I was his age, I used to be into normal things like kaplunk and shoplifting. <laughs> Look, try not to be too scared, son. Scared? I'm not scared. There's nothing a ghost can do to hurt me. I'm not afraid. Ah! I wish people would stop doing that. Well, fellows, well met. The weary travellers are returned to the warm hearth. Oh, God, Geoffrey's been possessed. <laughs> Festive spirit, Lee, that's the only thing that's possessing me. Once Jeffrey's had his Christmas Eve walk, he's a new man. What would you say to a spirit, Lee? Please don't kill me. <laughs> I wouldn't bother taking your coats off. We are not staying. Why? What's happened? I saw the ghost of the child. Oh, my God. Oh, for pity's sake. It was in the 70s. I thought you said it was a child. The 1970s. <laughs> it was my old mate, Ralph. What are you talking about? Well, you know, friends aren't supposed to keep secrets. Yeah? Yes, well, he'd inadvertently forgot to tell me something quite important, like he'd been dead for the last seven decades. <laughs> well, it's an easy mistake to make. I once forgot to tell my best friend I'd snogged her brother. Anyway, he's back, and he's taken the presents. And what's worse is he's written a note on the wall threatening to kill me. Oh, my God, that's what my friend did too. Well, <laughs> on a park bench. Did the ghost call you a slag as well? <laughs> Right, that's it. We're leaving right now. For God's sake, Lee. Are you going to be a coward for the rest of your life? Show some bloody backbone, man. You're right. Up yours, Geoffrey. We're bloody leaving. <laughs> well, I don't think we should leave either. A sensible voice at last. If there's one thing life has taught me, it's to always try and communicate with the dead. <laughs> well, that didn't last long. That way, Lee can apologise for the things that he's done. Well, how do we talk to a ghost? Three words. Ouija board. <laughs>
someone else or no, it isn't? <laughs> Can someone else be Michael Parkinson, please? <laughs> Lucy, you do it. Ask him what he wants. What do you want, Ralph? You want to know what happened to your dad? You already know what happened to your dad. Was it an accident? Was he killed? Who by? <laughs> so now we know. His father died of M.E. <laughs> Ralph, do you mean to cause us harm? All of us. Then who? <laughs> Al, not looking good for you, Lucy. <laughs> Ask him if he's got a problem with the golf of Lee Trevino. He's a kid. That's how they talk. <laughs> See you. All right, so now you're telling us that the ghost of a Victorian orphan <laughs> is texting us? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> what the hell's going on? Who are you? Don't come any closer, young man. You don't frighten me. I was in the 3rd Battalion, the Welsh Guards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Not so brave now, are we? Go on, Dad. Show him how it's done. <laughs> Ralph, can I just say, I would love the opportunity to buy you a nice new chair. DFS have got a lovely sale on at the moment. <laughs> it's buy now, pay September, with further discounts on selected goods. <laughs> There's a range of fabrics to choose from, and I don't want to die! Hello. <laughs> Where's Frank? How do you know Frank? He invited us to spend Christmas with him. Us? Me and my nana. He said he'd ring when it was safe to come round, but it's getting late. We haven't heard from him yet. <laughs> you must leave this place now. <laughs> I'm just play my favourite tune. <laughs> What's going on? Hi, Frank. Hi, love. Everybody, this is Molly. She lives with her grandma down in that place you bought the spuds. What, you mean the old biddy in the caravan? You've met her before, actually, Lee. She's called Carol. Carol? You mean that bit of strumpet you were knocking off in the 70s? Oi, that's my nan. <laughs> Sorry. Nana strumpet. <laughs> We've kept in touch over the years. I was hoping to rekindle a bit of the old romance. I mean, her exterior is a bit rusty, but I bet her goods are as ripe as ever. I feel sick. You feel sick? <laughs> it wasn't just carnal desire. I mean, I felt sorry for him, stuck in that old caravan at Christmas. So I invited the two of them to stay here. And then you lot turned up. And I had to go for plan B. Oh, was he coming as well? <laughs> and when I heard you were all scared of ghost, I sort of played up to it a bit, hoping it would make you leave. 
So that story that you told at breakfast was all a lie? No, no, there is some truth in it. There was a boy who lived here many, many years ago. Yeah? That's about it. <laughs> what about the glass moving? The cellar door opening? The writing on the wall? That were all me. I wish this was the end bit of Scooby-Doo. Why? Because then I'd get to rip your face off. <laughs> so, that kid Ralph in the 70s wasn't a ghost. Carol really did have a son. Yeah. He grew up to be the father of Molly. But he soon buggered off. Apparently, he had psychological issues. When he was a kid, someone locked him in a cell and threw coal in his face. <laughs> Now. I'm afraid not, Molly. We're going to have to spend Christmas in that cold caravan. I'll tell you what, because it's Christmas tomorrow, as a special treat for our dinner, we'll have some beans with our potatoes. Hot beans? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is frightful. Lovely spread, ladies. Wendy and Carol have certainly made that turkey go a long way. On the other hand, no one's seen that cat since yesterday. <laughs> Molly's having fun. It was very nice of you to give her your present. It was very nice of you to give her yours. <laughs> Who's the extra cheerfully? Well, I know we finally proved there's no ghost, but I still felt bad about burning that boy's rocking chair, so I made a new one. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Where did you get the wood? I chopped up an old crucifix I found hanging upside down in the attic. <laughs> what? Do you know what? This hasn't been such a bad Christmas after all. Well done. Perhaps I deserve another Christmas present. Like what? Where's the mistletoe? I'll see you at the car. <laughs> well, looks like this old place will be sold off very soon. Probably the last chance we get to see it. Bit of me will always be here. That chain's still not flushing, then. <laughs> One thing I don't get, Dad. I know all these ghostly goings on were you, but we were together almost all Christmas Eve. When did you get a chance to build that snowman? I didn't, you daft bugger. Molly that built that. Isn't that right, Molly, love? What? You built that scary snowman with a creepy face. I didn't build any snowman. Well, then who did? Christmas. Yeah, not going out, not staying in, just hanging around with my head in a spin, but there is no need to scream and shout. We're not going out, we are not going out. 